Hello. <clears throat> well, today I'm going to just talk about a film that is a cult classic today. Um, one that, uh, uh, upon its release, was had some uh, decent amount of controversy uh, aimed at it. And um, it's probably one of the best films of 1993. So, you know, it's 30 years old this year. And that movie is... Falling Down, starring Michael Douglas, Robert Duvall, Tuesday Weld as Duvall's um, <clears throat> wife, and um, Barbara Hershey as uh, Michael Douglas's ex-wife. Um, Michael uh, Douglas plays uh, Bill Foster, also known as Defense, because uh, of his license plate. Um, who is going home for his daughter's birthday and um, yeah, his ex-wife doesn't want him there because of, I guess, you know, obviously, as we find out, there's, you know, they're divorced and also just, yeah, she just doesn't want him around for their daughter's birthday because he, like, has a temper and blow up and uh, throughout the course of the movie you know um, <clears throat> you see Bill Foster do various things that in many ways we we all kind of wish we would do like you know complain about you know, certain prices on foods at like grocery stores and um, like he wants a coke but it's like it's just a ridiculous amount of <laughs> money for just a can of coke in his opinion and um he starts to destroy the uh store especially after you know the guy they kind of get into an exchange and the guy gets a bat he takes the bat and then he goes and to a uh like a parker area where uh it's like the, the turf uh, for gangs, and uh, he attacks them when they want his briefcase, and so he also gets like a switchblade, and which comes in handy later. Uh, goes to a um, restaurant, uh, you know, a uh, 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 whammy burger, which is not at all a parody of uh, McDonald's, <laughs> um, and. You know, it's also sort of addresses something at the time, which I remember living through in the 90s and even through in the 2000s, where, you know, who wants breakfast, but, you know, you came in too late. So, like, after, like, a 11 o'clock, you can't get breakfast. So, pretty much all day, you can go and get breakfast if you want uh, at McDonald's um, and I believe other places. But, you know, at the time, that was a... Yeah, you know, that was a thing. You know, if you you got there just like even just one minute uh, after it was done, like, nope, they, they they can't serve breakfast anymore. And for various people, that was frustrating. And so, yeah, you know, he though of course because of what happens with the gang, he attains their guns because they shoot at him in retaliation for all that, and they are terrible. They miss him. And then they crash the car, and then, like, a bunch of people are, like, dead in the car. And, yeah, he gets the guns and uh, takes them. Uh, and he shoots accidentally in the air with a Uzi and um, complains about, the, like, the food in the sense that, you know, you see on advertisements and commercials that the food looks amazing. Like, the best burgers you could ever have, like at Alan you know, McDonald's for like the Big Macs or the Whoppers at Burger King. And then when you actually get the uh, legitimate that, that burgers at these restaurants or fast food restaurants specifically, uh, it, it, it isn't what it looks like, you know. You know, it might taste good, sure, but, you know, it, it, it does not appear as advertised. And so, you know, that's a frustration. He goes to 
an army or military store, maybe an army surplus or whatever, and he uh, goes to buy his boots because or shoes because he has a hole in one shoe, and so he uh, uh, he uh, talks to the guy who runs the place, who's a like a homophobe and a racist, like a neo-Nazi kind of dude type dude. <clears throat> And through, you know, this exchange like they're having, you know, things take a turn and he's angry at the guy for not being like him and he's gonna, like, handcuff him, basically, and all that stuff and have him handcuff himself and, or, or give him his other hand and he bought a, a snow globe for his daughter for her birthday and, uh, he, uh, and also in that scene where he buys a snow globe, you know, there's a guy who says he's not economically viable, and that's why he lost his job, and then he's arrested for, I guess, like, essentially, like, disturbing the peace and protesting and such, like, without a permit, and, you know, and after that, uh, the, the guy uh, destroys the, uh, 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 snow globe. He uh, gets the switchblade he has in his pocket, and he stabs him with it, and also do the uh, Nick, the uh, uh, neo-Nazi, had a gun. Yeah, you know, he picks up the gun, and as the guy looks at the wound that he has from being stabbed, and then Bill promptly shoots and kills him, and then, uh, yeah. And from there, things... Uh, uh, devolve even uh, further and uh, you know and such as uh, going over a fence and uh, to a uh, country club with golfers and he gets angry and he shoots a, a golf cart which then goes down into a pond and the guy who was making a huge deal and hit a golf ball in his direction he's as he's having a heart attack and needs heart pills to help him and they are in the cart which then promptly at that point goes into the water and well that's it that sucks for him because uh, bill isn't gonna help him so he's basically gonna just die on the uh uh golf course um and this is an amazing you know film in the sense that you know it's just you know, the descent of a guy throughout the course of a day, you know, of course, this is like obviously having been built up and he used to work for the government and like, you know, he used to like help like build missiles essentially and how he used to was actually essential once tells us to Robert Duvall, who of course knows all the, all that stuff by the point they finally meet at the end. And, uh, he, you know, in a way, you know, <clears throat> Kirk Douglas uh, thought this was his best, you know, his, his son's best work, and I agree with him. You know, you now he thought that, you know, like, like he sees him as both like the villain and the victim all at once. You know, he, uh, it, you know, the film doesn't condone what he does, except, you know, I mean, it, it does not do that, uh, but the only reason people sort of see, Bill Foster any sort of positive light is because, you know, he does certain things we all wish we could do at times. But, of course, we never do that because, well, there's consequence to, consequences to the actions if we ever did so. And uh, as a result, nobody does it. Like, you know, we don't go and uh, shoot a rocket into a like a sewer uh, where road construction is going on despite not needing any work done there's no need but you know this the people who work for the city have to make sure they have the same budget uh like every year and that way because if they get things done early you, you don't need to need to uh they don't need to be paid as much or given a, as much of a budget for the next year for 
you know, fixing or improving roads or any sort of construction work of the sort of, of road work. And so they got to take as much time as they can and all that and make sure they have the uh, necessary. But then he, you know, he's like, I'm going to give you something to fix because there was nothing ro wrong with the, you know, road prior and yeah, it's just, it's just an interesting odyssey, and of course, you know, Duvall's character is you know pretty interesting too. It's, it's he's retiring as a sergeant in the police department, and on you know, his last day, you know, he's working on trying to help solve what's going on with this guy going around and beating up and or destroying, not necessarily beating up, but destroying like a uh, a. Uh, convenience store uh, and then the whole shooting uh with uh you know his uh with uh, uh at the gang hat uh, hat at him uh, earlier and you know and you know Duvall's character uh he's like he, this dude's gonna uh, he, he's just gonna do something big you know and of course like in the conclusion he's gonna like, kill his wife and daughter and so trying to race to find where they are and uh it's uh very uh just a very good film i mean i could talk all and on about the overall plot but at the end of the day this is a film that you know had controversy due to the fact that people thought this was a fascist film when it wasn't um people thought this was a uh uh trying to make him out to be a hero it wasn't but you know it does do what it can to show some sympathy for the guy you know he loses his family, loses his job, and things basically are falling apart, falling down. And, yeah, this is a, it's like you could sort of uh, kind of get why this guy acts the way he does. It doesn't justify what he does, but you can understand. And um, this film was directed by Joel Schumacher, whom, of course, people best known know him for the two Batman films after Tim Burton and just before Christopher Nolan rebooted the Batman franchise with uh, the Dark Knight trilogy. I've talked about those films. Uh, but if you look at this film and other films of his like St. Elmo's Fire and um, The Lost Boys, this, you know, I think this gives you a good uh, clue as to the kind of Batman film he would have made. Like, if he was given more free reign, you know, and there are scenes that were cut that would have made it more dark or much a darker film. And certain subplots or a subplot was gone entirely. And, you know, with that film, it's unfortunate that, um, well, wow, that's gone. We don't get to see this dark or at least darker uh, version because no doubt the various light tone and comedic uh stuff with the villains uh, probably would have still been in there but uh who knows maybe the whole dark stuff that um uh would have been more prominent in batman forever might have been able to have had a decent balance of uh dark and light of course we'll never know but you know i think a, a film like falling down is a good example of what joe schumacher's uh, would have liked to have done and um uh, i think this is joel schumacher's best film of his career um there's also eight millimeter with nicholas cage um and lost boys is good too um and you know watching films like uh, those that are fairly dark and serious um you know there are some humorous moments a little bit here and there not laugh out loud hilarious but chuckle worthy at least and um yeah this is an excellent film um 
I love to get the DVD of this, um, but you know, or, or the Blu-ray, I have the DVD, but I do wish also that the, for special features there was more, because you know, this just has the commentary with Michael Douglas and Joel Schumacher, conversation with Michael Douglas, um, and the theatrical trailer, and I believe also you know, the conversation with Michael Douglas is like the making of sort of thing on here. I don't know. I wish there was some more stuff. Like they actually talked uh, to Michael Douglas and Robert Duvall and some other people involved about this film more. Um, and who knows, maybe this year for its 30th anniversary, there'll be a 4K version. And if so, hopefully they'll not only have the special features they have here, but more. You know, I think that would be great. You know, um, whether Warner Brothers would actually release that themselves, which I would kind of hope they would, but if not, maybe a company like Shout Factory or uh, Kino Lorber or Criterion would go and release it for Blu-ray to have all and more special features and stuff. Um, but Falling Down is a film that, you know, 30 years ago it came out, uh, like in the summer, I believe. Filmed also during the L.A. riots, so, you know, they had to uh, con do, deal with that uh, at times. And I think they actually did shoot it, if I recall correctly. You know, during it, they were able to find places that were uh, fine enough during the riots that, you know, they could actually film for a bit here and there. Uh, go and do something else uh, later but yeah this is a very interesting film great film Michael Douglas for sure got uh, uh, snubbed for an Academy Award uh, nomination at least I think he should have won the Academy Award for this film um, and even perhaps you know you know me I've mentioned ties before but uh also, a Schindler's List with Steven Spielberg, uh, you know, uh, Liam Neeson. I think he, Liam Neeson and Michael Douglas should have tied uh, for Best Actor of 1993 for uh, for playing, uh, you know, Oscar Schindler for Neeson and uh, Bill Foster for you know, Michael Douglas. Um, great performances overall. Um, now, maybe also... Robert Duvall for supporting actor, um, though I do think that uh, DiCaprio should have won for What's Eating Gilbert Grape. Um, that's me, and um, but I don't know. I think if anything, uh, Duvall's performance would have been a uh, is even better than Tommy Lee Jones's performance in The Fugitive, and Tommy Lee Jones won for The Fugitive. Um, it's not a bad film or a performance, but uh, between the two, I don't know. I, also, I just like, I think I like, I believe I like Michael, uh, Robert Duvall more, uh, just as an actor. I just, uh, I, so I could be biased there, but I, I do think his performance in Falling Down is better than Tommy Lee Jones's performance in uh, uh, The Fugitive, because, you know, you know in, a, in many ways, Tommy Lee Jones plays uh, the same character a lot in many of the films he does so uh, he does it well but I don't know it's just I, I don't know Robert Duvall I think was more deserving of a nomination and um, I think also the script could have been acknowledged um, I don't know about if it would have received a best picture or director nomination would have been cool if, if it did but I don't know if it would have gone that far you know the Acting by Douglas and Duvall, I think, should have been a, a, a an automatic thing. But unfortunately, because I think I'm pretty sure because of the controversy this film had, it's part of why it didn't receive such uh, award uh, recognition at all when it came to the uh, ceremonies and such. But if anything, that just also shows how, as time goes on, falling down still. Uh, is a is an amazing film it's a cult classic these days 
uh, especially. And uh, yeah, it's it's a, an excellent film. It's one that's worth watching uh, if you haven't seen it, and if you have seen it, it's worth watching it, rewatching it. Um, yeah. So uh, give it a watch, either for the first time ever or for the first time in a long time. And so yeah, that's all. Um, that's all I have to say. This is a excellent film. Also, a fairly a uh, dark movie. Of obviously, just to start off the year talking about movies, um, but you know, hey, it is what it is, I guess. Um, but yeah, I uh, hope all of you are doing well. Hope your year is going great. Um, my year is starting off pretty well, and I hope all of you are doing well and have a great weekend and a great week and overall i hope your year is going well so far and i hope you'll have keep having a great year so take care bye